The only way you can actually do it is you magically make sure that it lands right over here. Which is very hard. Or that's or it. Or you do something like that. Oh, no, that didn't work either. And then blue hits blue and you still get <laughs> no points. it over here. Today, guys, we have two games on the table we're gonna be taking a look at. Both of them are by Cosmos. One of them is Drop It, and the other is Dimension. Dimension plays one to four players, and Drop It plays two to four players. However, both games play ages eight and up, and roughly take about 30 minutes. And both of them are abstract strategy games. Now, they're definitely different games with their own unique qualities. One is literally a game where you're placing balls down in your own little area, stacking them up, and following rules. And the other one, Drop It, is the one where you're going to be dropping down little tiles or little pieces of uh, wood into what what appears to be a connect four type of a contraption and you're trying to follow rules as well. One of them is more of a time strategy, the other one is more of a dexterity strategy, but they do share some similar elements. Me and Callie are going to discuss one and the other, talk about what they do, how they function, and whether or not either one might be the right pick for you to take a look at. These are both family games, they are party games, and obviously because they only play up to four players, you wouldn't play with a huge group of people, but you could separate them out and play with a lot of people with multiple games at no risk and no cost to you. We'll go ahead and take a look down below. We'll show you the games and how they play, and then we'll basically come up and talk about both of them and whether or not you should pick them up. All right, let's take a look at Dimension and Drop It. Here are the games for Cosmos' Drop It and Dimension, and I guess I'll talk about Drop It and Callie will talk about Dimension. And like I said before, they are both abstract strategy games, one with a dexterity aspect to it, and the other, that holds dexterity, but is also more yeah, puzzly. Yeah, timed uh, puzzle dexterity, yeah. And so let's go ahead and just get into what the games are. So in this one here, it plays up to four players. And depending on the number of players, is how many colors you're going to take. Colors are going to have arrangement of different types of shapes, whether they be triangles, squares, circles, and um, rectangles, I think, or larger or diamonds, that's it, diamonds. And basically you're going to be dropping these things into this little area here. And your objective is to make sure that shapes don't match shapes or touch shapes and, sh and colors don't touch colors. So if yellow touches yellow, you won't score any points. If green touches green, if a red square were to touch a blue square, then you wouldn't score any as well. You're trying to score without hitting any of those specific colors on other colors and shapes on other shapes. And basically as the game goes on, this is going to be harder and harder to place certain things in certain areas and it'll climb to the top here. And there's also little circles where you Guys can see them or I don't know but they're gonna have numbers in them and if you can have your shape touch that circle it'll score you bonus points it'll be based on the height and it'll be based on whether or not it's going to touch one of those little circles in there players are gonna go back and forth each of them taking a turn and placing them in here and as they score points they'll move up on this little tracker here which goes all the way to 25 once it hits 25 you'll get one of these little goodies here and then you go around the board again and if you go around the board again you can go to 50 and then after that you go up to 75 but most likely you're not going to score more than 75 points. So these are good point trackers. And of course, there's additional components in the game. These little happy face tiles, as well as these little boards here, which are going to give you a variety of different placement styles and strategies to play the game. And also, of course, this is flippable. So you can play with this variant or the other variant if you like. We played this live and we had a lot of fun with it. I can say that as much. And it has all of the sturdy, strong components you'd expect for a game from Cosmos. So that dimension now all right in dimension so i set up here just two player each player has their own sort of puzzle board here where and their own set of uh colored balls and you're actually going to be placing these in the middle here and depending on what combinations of of strategic little what rules you have to abide by for that round while trying to get as many of the balls on your board as possible and they'll actually stack up like this which is pretty neat so you have to think a little three-dimensionally and some of the rules of the uh, game they'll change each round this one only have one blue ball out on your puzzle this one 
uh, white balls must touch green and vice versa. This one, you have to have more green uh, balls than orange. And over here, orange can't touch orange and black balls can't be on top of any other color. So you try to, within the time limit, fit all of those different requirements. Then after the time runs out, everyone will score their individual puzzle, getting points for each rule that they kept to. And also some, maybe some negative points if they didn't uh, reach they did all of the rules. Yeah. yeah, but then also you get points for each, uh, so the number of balls that you have on your board. And you'll, you'll get all those points. You'll get bonus points if you get all, all the of rules. the rules on your puzzle. And it's like uh, five or six rounds, I think, that you'll play and just score up all of your points at the end, including the bonus points. Yeah, and you're basically having these, the, all these areas are little tray areas in which you can just hold the balls. Mm -hmm. And then this area here is your play area. You flip the timer over, you place the balls however you choose to, trying to follow the rules as best as you can. Yeah. When the time runs out, the round's over and you do it again. We played this one live as well. Oh, the same day, actually. That. Yes, because <laughs> we got these games in. <laughs> and both of them are basically following rules. This one here, you're basically trying to follow the rules of shapes and colors. Mm -hmm. And this one over here, you're trying to follow the rules of how to place and where to place. And of course, and the, the number, numbers that you can have on your board. Yep. Yep. Pretty straightforward drop it and dimension. Pretty simple strategy games with a little bit of complexity <laughs> and some unique strategies that you might not think of. Let's go ahead and discuss the game and let them know our thoughts on it, whether or not they should pick them up. And then you guys can tell us what you think down below. Have you played these games before? You could already go ahead and let us know if you have. So let's discuss the games drop it and dimension. All right. Well, we'll start with mine first. Drop it. Drop it, like I said before, is a dexterity game. It doesn't involve time, however, but it does involve placement, where you choose to place, how you choose to place, and what you choose to place all make a huge difference. Yeah. And a little bit of physics and luck on that part, Yeah, too. sometimes <laughs> your shapes are going to bounce around, and it might not land in the appropriate areas you want it to land in. So, for instance, with this big little, this little thing here, yeah. having to use this square next to if you're blue, probably is not the greatest option option because if it touches in the blue area mm -hmm. here or if it touches this in any way that's going to leave you with that point so the only way you can actually do it is you magically make sure that it lands right over here which is very hard or that's or it you do something like that Oh, no, nope, that didn't work either. And then blue hits blue and you still get <laughs> oh, no points. I wanted it over here. So yeah, you are trying to basically figure out ways in which you want to drop and how you drop. So in this yeah. case here, it does not touch any of the same shape, it does not touch any of the same, same color. So it would score one point. You would move yourself along that track. Red would, that would, that would also do it because it's not touching the bottom. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward as to how the game works, scoring as you go along. And of course, having the variance of play is very nice. It plays similar to games like Connect Four, right? But with some unique little twists to it, it makes it a little bit more fun in my opinion. And the yeah. quality of it is wonderful. The components are great, mm -hmm. high quality, high standards. Uh, not a huge amount of art, obviously. Most of it's just symbol, symbolism, symbols. symbols. And yeah, color, just bright shapes and color, which is fine. But I think the kind of the back and forth nature of it makes it pretty socially interactive because what your opponent plays will depend on what you want to play <laughs> and there's kind of some fun opportunities for banter and, and a healthy competition. I think uh, some of the negatives that you could kind of see with the game is unfortunately there is a lot of luck in the game as to if your shapes bounce and whatnot and you don't always have the most control that you'd want to have and in some instances based on how the board is set up you might actually have no good move mm -hmm. where in mm -hmm. fact every space that you'd want to go to is very likely to not uh, be able to get there so yeah. if you have like this little circular area but you don't have a circle anymore at you kind of cannot place there you have to get really lucky mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and that can happen sometimes you could say that it's the poor choices that you've made throughout the game that has cost you if you end up with all three circles at the end that might be your your a little bit of a user blender. error <laughs> yeah. but there are cases in which case you just might not have the greatest yeah. board based on how they bounced around but that goes for both players so it kind of evens out in that way yeah, but I just say it could get say that could make somebody frustrated though, not yeah. being able to play. In fact, I think Josh got frustrated once where he's like, I have nowhere to play, so I can't go anywhere. I'm like, yeah, that that's probably a thing that happens. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Um, the scoreboard's nice, and you just move around the little square on the board, and you get to take your little tokens. I think it's pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rules are very easy to learn, very easy to pick up. You could literally just start playing the game without explaining anything, and people would get it as we went along. Yeah, yeah. I mean, made the, it great for live stream because people could just come and, and they could watch, see the see video. They could on. see it as you're going on. It's a good <laughs> yeah. display game. It's something that a lot of people that don't like know a lot about games will understand pretty easily because yes, connect very four accessible game yeah especially because connect four that's a mm -hmm. very popular game that has been around since i don't know how long but i've always as a kid played that game you know yeah and just because of its um sort of table presence it could be a good game to kind of invite others to play games with you yeah, they'll see that game they'll yeah. see this game they'll think of that game they'll come and sit down and realize there's a little bit more strategy to this one a little bit more unique twists and turns and uh get colorful into, too get them into the games <laughs> so uh drop it what do you think uh yeah overall great family friendly uh accessible open um short and sweet overall Please quick easy and fun yeah. pretty straightforward <laughs> not something a huge intense gamer is going to enjoy probably not always the case but probably however anything any family any any party gamer is going to really enjoy this game and for those of you nostalgic for connect four that want something a little more a little yeah. more interesting a little more unique and higher quality this is the game i would definitely suggest to those people and it's a game i would have people like my grandmother play my younger cousins play something they can easily get into and feel like they're part of what we do so yeah, I, I really enjoy Drop It. I think it's a great game. I think most people enjoy the game. All right, let's talk about Dimension. Dimension. So, I mean, I love the strategy in this game and um, just having to figure out, okay, what is the best possible combination of where to put the balls and kind of have them stack on each other, but you can't do it that way. And you kind of you can kind of work backwards as well from the rules as far as how many of each ball you can have and where they go. So there's some some cool thought that kind of you kind of get into as you play the game more and more. Uh, and I like the 3D aspect of it as well. You kind of have to turn your board around, make sure you're doing it right, or be able to visualize it before you even put them on there. Yeah, this game is really similar to Drop It in certain ways, and that mm -hmm. involves following rules. And in the game, there are many rules. All of these are rules here. There's probably about a good 50 or yeah. 60 of them. And you're just trying to follow them as best as you can. And as you move around the board and try and calculate, you can kind of work the game however you want. People that are more mathematically inclined, geometrically inclined, are going to be able to understand how the placements will work, where the balls can be placed and how many balls can fit because not all balls will be able to fit even even if you actually had all the balls down you might not be able to just because you'll need to follow all the rules so in general i think you're gonna have four balls left out regardless so i'm gonna go ahead and take this and pick it up and show you guys there's gonna be yeah. four balls left off and it's gonna look like this with one ball at the very top but usually because of the rules you're never gonna play all these balls anyway yeah yeah but um, the you might question still is, be able to play to this level, but I'm yeah, not always even this thing. Not all. Yeah, yeah not always. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're not going to be able to place even maybe only up to the very bottom portion, just maybe one on the top, just based on the rules. They change, you know, and you, you're not going to always be mm -hmm. able to calculate as better as, you know, as, as comparatively to some rules that kind of work together. Some rules balance very well and some rules don't. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, that would be my negative for this game here, yeah. is there can be multiple rules that counter counter uh, ca they contradict, contradict each, each other, other. yeah like, so it'd be like you, you can only have one blue ball but you can't but you have to have more blue balls than orange balls than you and, and you need you, two orange balls but you need two orange balls as well so, so like, you're like i don't know what to do now the rules specifically say you what do you follow to the best of your ability and yeah, try and score as many points? Yeah, and then you just get negative points for the one that you choose not to do. I would actually say that that's a bad rule. And I would say what you should instead do is remove any contradicting rules and put new ones down that don't contradict as best as possible. Mm -hmm. well, that could be a house rule. You that's some, I mean, I would I wouldn't even I would just make that a rule yeah. in the game in my opinion. I, <laughs> I think the previous rule's kind of broken. It's not as fun because you're not able you're to actually build things. You're definitely going to get negative points. Yeah, why do 
you want to get which is not a great play. The experience. best play you can do is negative points, or maybe yeah. just a bit slight positive. It's it's not fun. So I like the idea of making sure the cards rules balance out. But I guess it just depends on the gamer that you are. It's not something that actually I consider game breaking, but it's very simple. Because there's multiple rounds too, so it's not um, like the whole game is that way. No, no. So. I think we maybe had one or two rounds out of the bunch when we were playing just on that live stream that had contradictory rules. However, like I said, I would just remove the ones that contradict, place out new ones, and you're good to go. It's not that big of a problem, mm -hmm. but for instance, if it is a big problem for you, that's what I would suggest you do, and it is a big problem for me in the game. Uh, because I just like to be able to, to score. I like to be able to feel like there's victory. Even if technically, if you get negative three and I only get negative one, I did succeed, but I mean, what, what's, yeah. where's the value in that? <laughs> so that would probably be my only negative in regards to the game, other than I'm just not a very good puzzler. So having to put these rules all down to memory each and every time them changing, is definitely more of a complexity to me. I don't remember exactly where to place what balls at all times, and it can goof me up. Or somebody who's more inclined, who's got good memory, and is able to read all the cards as like as soon as they come out, and they're like, okay, I know exactly how many balls, I know where they all need to go, <laughs> and I'm sitting there at the end of the game with half the balls on there, and I don't know what I'm, I'm like, ah, you know. So, of course, those but people- But the time does give you enough time to actually try it out and take it back and figure something yeah, out. Yeah, you're not like exceptionally too. rushed yeah. in the game, but if you're struggling, you, you will get to see, not... Okay, if I put this yeah. here and put this here, will it fit? No, that doesn't work. I can rearrange it. And so it has that um, sort of feedback. You can see the feedback yourself and change your answer. If you want to make it harder too, as soon as you pick up a ball from the platform and, pl and go to place it, you can't put the ball back. But you could do some crazy uh. rules like that. It's like chess. I don't know if you want a more extreme experience. I like the fact that if you do follow all the rules, you get bonus tokens. Yes, so they weren't as powerful as I thought they could have been. Because I think if you only get a couple, you actually still get negative points. <laughs> <laughs> Which just felt kind of weird to me. You had to get Especially like, if you can't even... a lot of them in order to get some actual positive points out of it. And it might not even possible because the game won't let you do it. Yeah. I know I'm ragging <laughs> on this point a lot. It's not, it really isn't that big of a deal. No, no. But because on your first experience, you're just like, why, you know? So either way. We yeah. always want to gain points and give players to feel like they're accomplishing things rather than that they're going to get negatives for not accomplishing things high quality pieces. The balls are yes. very nice. They feel really nice. They're thick and they're heavy. Uh, I, I, I think they're probably almost fully uh, filled, uh, filled with plastic material oh, or whatever. They're not, hollow. yeah, they're not like ping pong balls. You no, know what I mean? No, they're no. nice quality. Yeah, they All the cards are nice quality. They're mm -hmm. very easy to understand. Once you, once you've seen the game once or twice, these have to connect together. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward after a couple of games yeah. go. And even if you haven't seen any before, you're likely to know what they are. Well, and there's, uh, the reference. Little yeah, they have reference cards as well. As well. So. so overall high quality game, definitely a lot of fun in my opinion. Yes, I liked it a lot. I love the puzzle aspect. It's just kind of unique and, and something different, right? Just to stack the balls in these different ways, try to figure it out. A little, definitely a little more complex than I would yeah. say Drop It is, mm -hmm. as far as strategy goes, and a little bit more unnerving as you're Probably trying to figure things out. Probably more so just because of the number of the cards. Having six for each round would be a lot for younger players, but you could just remove a couple, make it a little easier. Yeah, definitely. Well. Mm -hmm. So of the two games that we talked about, which one is your favorite? Ooh, I mean, I think if we were going to play on the live stream again, I would choose Drop It. I think it's just visually uh, very nice and kind of engaging and the banter going back and forth was great with the audience. Um, just for my what I personally choose, like playing you and I, probably Dimension. <laughs> uh, I would say you? I enjoy Dimension more. Now, of course, it's funny because I've been ragging on it more, but that's only because I enjoyed it so much and liked the aspect of how they placed and how you kind of had control of this little area. I would even, mm -hmm. wouldn't even even mind a bigger game with more circles and more rules to them to try and score more points. Ooh, yeah. I think that would be kind of cool as well. But I just really enjoyed the game. There was a lot of thinking involved, and just because I'm not good at something doesn't mean I can't enjoy it or get better at it. It's going to help me with memory. It's going to help me with remembering certain 
rules. Like I said, Drop It does that as well, but I think it's more engaged for a younger audience. It's more engaged for family, even though both of them say eight and up. Uh, Drop It is probably the more kid friendly, and I'd say Dimension is a little bit more on the gamer side of things, especially because you can kind of increase the difficulty and change the stylization as for how you want to place out the rules. This one has its one variant, but for the most part, you're just dropping shapes in the thing, which is fine. It's it does exactly what it means to do. Well, also to mention, you kind of you have your own area of complete control over your own area, and there's really not a lot of luck. The luck is just what uh, rules come out. Yeah, you you, you fail on your own on yes. your own accord, which makes a big difference for me mm -hmm. as well. So, m minusing the little rule error, I didn't like much there. Uh, and this one here, just the a bit of luck and and sometimes things just don't go your way. Both of these games were a lot of fun. I really yeah. enjoy abstract games. I've been playing them quite a bit more often than not, and uh, surprisingly been enjoying them a lot more than I ever previously <laughs> did because I used to not like abstract games all that much, even though I was a huge fan of chess, so that's kind of weird. Yeah, but but I just didn't like the other ultimate ones. abstract game. <laughs> know, right? But regardless, I really enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed that game. They're both a lot of fun. I mm -hmm. definitely think you guys will enjoy these as well. If you've never played them, maybe you should give them a shot. Do a try before you buy at certain game houses and whatnot they do have them available yeah. or pick them up if you're doing a family event they're great presents these would make huge yes. great, great family christmas mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff presents kids will enjoy these games specifically that and one you, as well and because they're pretty simple to play you could just pull them out and play them right then and there which is a lot of fun too when gi when giving gifts right Overall, both of them are very solid games, and I highly suggest you check out both of them depending on your wants and needs.